All right, with pajamas in tow, let's head after the Zenithian shield. So let's go ahead and toss up a zoom back to Zooming Gale. It's bugging me that Lone Star Harbor is not on my zoom list. Let's just head east, poke the town, and double back. We'll never return to Hay, but we can head back to Lodestar. And hey, there's an enemy we didn't run into before, the Rotten Apple. The Rotten Apple is a recruitable enemy who's pretty good, actually. He gets very high health growth. If you're level 7, you have a 1 in 2 chance of getting him. He only goes up to level 20. But he's a good user of fangs and... Uh, he gets some good support spells. Stop by here, you can pick up a souvenir. For a thousand, hmm. We're actually short on cash for something I want to buy. Do we have anything to sell? I don't, hmm. We'll have to come back. Let's just go ahead and jot down a note then, huh? I guess you could pick up hay, oh, but we're never going to return there. But now that I have Lodestar Harbor, being out of cash is fine. I can just zip back whenever I need to. Couple of recruitable enemies, Hooligans and Pocus Puppet. Hooligan and Pocus Puppet both 1 in 16 are the chances. Though so, unlikely. Hey, hey, level for Gudian. We are coming up on what I would say is the hardest area slash boss fight of the game. Where other places will recommend grinding up to level 20, 22, 23. Which you could do either at Wheelbrook with Metal Slimes or above it all. It's not a bad place either. Because above it all also has the Metal Slimes as well as regular enemies to give you decent experience. A new enemy, Thaumaturge. It can cast Swoosh. That's the second level wind spell against you. It does some damage, but fortunately Gudian with the magic shield and his innate resistance just kind of bounces off of him. Now this isn't Master Ferrado, however... Let's humble a ticket. Yeah, whatever. Um, keep forgetting to use that Terror Crow. See what it does. It's just a little inn along the way. I like it. I like when they just have inns out of nowhere. Rest stops for travelers. Tiny villages. And mini metal number... 11. We're gonna want a lot of those. We're gonna get a lot of those. Here's just a regular church. Hey, how's it going? Pretty little Nira. Uh, I don't. Never heard of her. But if you check here, we can pick up a scuttlebutt, a ledger. Barely a drop of goosey, jo jo goosey gossip. Goosey gossip misses the pages of the ledger. It's a knickknack. Oh, 
Nero left the Abbey. When we when we were at the Abbey, wasn't someone saying that there was a rich girl there? Wonder if it's the same one. I can't because we can't talk to her right now. Well, we could use a rest anyway after that fight. Do I think women should be demure and unassuming? Uh, no. Women can be loud, boastful. They can do whatever they want. And be your own person. You are. No differences between the two. And a little rest stop is nice. Pick up another souvenir, a mini metal, and then head through a southern cave. And our new, some more of our buddies here. Now there's a new enemy here, Mudraker, that you can recruit. If you're at least a level 11, you have a 1 in 4 chance of picking up a Mudraker. But now that we're past the point of, now that we have Zoom, I'm going to welcome any monsters that do decide to join us, because I can just drop them back off with Monty. Before it was just a pain to drag them all the way back. Oh, that other new enemy, Wormbat. He can breathe fire, he's not a big deal though. But a big deal is this mini metal number 12. Oh, Pajamas is angry at that. Whole bunch of, of these guys. Now, because he's the only one recruitable, it doesn't matter what order he dies in, the Mudraker will be the one checked for the role. One and four, you'd expect it to happen. We did miss that one and two chance at the Rotten Apple, though. I'm not quite sure what these spooky auras are supposed to be doing, but... Eh. Yeah, sure. Mudraker. If you have more than four, they'll climb in the wagon. If you have no space in the wagon, it'll go straight to Monty. Starts off at level 1, it has War Cry, Tongue Lashing, it can be a decent support. But level 1, 54 strength. That is up there with our actual fighters. At level 1. It's slow as molasses, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's slow as mud. And for a reference... I wonder. I've never actually used one. It can wear iron armor. Can't wear the metal, the magic shield, which I, I would disqualify it for. Sword? Ah, sword user. That thing would be horrifying to see this thing crawling towards you extremely slowly, donned in leather and iron armor, wielding a broadsword. We'll make our way back to Monty eventually and drop him off. In fact, bow, bow. that's what dogs sound like. Bow, bow. Not wolf, not bark. Bow. And Bingo was his name-o. Huh, I wonder who that was. I don't think we ever see Bingo again, actually. Ready, <laughs> contremps. And here we are in... Mastro Forato. I do want to swing back to Fortuna, drop off... Our Mud Raker. What was his name? Never even asked you your name. Clayton. He's made of clay. That's really good, I like that, actually. Eventually, we'll have be, be holding on to enough monsters we can see how our luck went. What if we drop off ourselves? <laughs> I 
Alright, go ahead and look after Clayton for you. Yeah, that means that we have a 1 in... We managed to pick up a 1 in 4, and a 1 in 32. Not one of the better 1 in 32s, but, you know, 1 in 32. Alright, and back to Master Ferrato. Weird that it's higher up on the list than Wheelbrook and Wow Brownback, but it is what it is. All right, been a long cave. Let's check out a bar. Riscoletti. This sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, I'm heading out there. Gold digging. Wonder what's going on. Maybe everyone's in quarantine. No, they're at the mansion. This guy's super stoked too, alright. Maybe he's friends with the innkeeper in Fortuna. And... Aha, an iron shield. By now, you should have an iron shield for everyone that could use it, or better. Protection against fire and ice. I guess they could still be worth holding on to, because this is just magic and fire, right? Just fire? I wonder if the magic part of it is bugged, or if the peep line was wrong. I wonder. Down the well is nothing, just some growth. Crispin. Uh, no, I'm not married. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah, not about the lottery part, but about the... Can't sweet talk the ladies when you're younger. Or you can't, you can only sweet talk them when you're younger. You can sweet talk them however you want. You can keep, we'll keep going until we finish. Well, until we burn out, basically. Yeah, I'll toss the shield in the bag. And that was mini metal number 13. All right, we're almost ha just about halfway there to what we really want. And we find some garbage. Toss that strap of paper into the, right into the bag. Hmm, it's a cult. Oh, guess not the bag. We gotta drop them in nachos, if you look there at the bottom of the screen. Everyone got their hand in the nachos. Looks like no one's manning the shops here. Are these real pots or just fake pots? They're yeah, just decorative, decorative pots. Oh, there's the armor shop open. Well, that's nice. If you had a Prestigitator, I would give them the Cloak of Evasion. It's a really good armor that doesn't offer breath protection, but the physical evade's really good. Still, none of these are these aren't worth it. If you have a Hooligan, Dancer's Costume's probably a pretty good armor. I do want to pick up a top hat, though, at some point for Gutrude. This picture... My little, my little slime buddy wearing a top hat. Be adorable. I was wondering if maybe that would tell me what the weapon shop sold, but not till later. There's a back door here, trust me. Yeah, I'm kind of in that situation with you, buddy. Uh, I'm all about... Being, having a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. Oh, 
pop this open for a seed of wisdom. I guess we're not going to use this. Unless I get super lucky with one of my monster drops, so... But it's there. If I was keeping Clayton, I would have given that to him. Uh, yeah, I'm here to get married. We just have to wait in line. Crispin Burns. I don't understand the pun on this one. Hmm, they're all here to get at the money. I'm just here because, you know, I was 16 years old. Maybe 17 at this point, and, uh... Never quite had a lady. Well, we're actually just here for the Zenithian Shield, but we'll do whatever it takes to get it. Oh, is she the one that we're here to marry? Seems a little aggressive. No, that's Deborah. We're here for Nera. Now, in the Super Nintendo version of Dragon Quest V, she just doesn't exist. They added her in for the DS version. She also does not exist for the movie. Hello, Rodrigo? Well, I guess, yeah. Rodrigo Briscoletti. Is this, is this guy supposed to be... Italian or Spanish? Rodrigo makes me lean towards Spanish, but Briscoletti leads me towards Italian. I wonder. For example, Sancho I thought was the only Spanish guy in the whole game, but maybe this place could be close enough to the gold and wealth of Spain? Are we talking like the rich merchants of Italy? So what he's saying is, whoever manages to get the Circle of Fire from a volcano, and the Circle of Water from, I guess, somewhere underwater, somewhere surrounded by water, will be the one to marry him. Why those are his conditions, I don't know. And Nira seems quite fond of us. Now, even if you weren't reading the shelves, the books throughout the game, this one has an item in it. You didn't think there'd be an item in a bookshelf, but there it is. It isn't useful, but it's there. Locks chests, hmm. Now everyone else is getting a head start, but we have some we have some panty rating to do. Free silver tiara. That'll sell for some money. Hmm. Maybe long ago in a galaxy far, far away. And here we find a TNT ticket, awesome. And another silk apron that we can sell. Now when I mentioned we were coming up on the hard, one of the hardest bosses in the game, well, the Circle of Fire. There are certain monsters that if you have it, will turn off the difficulty of that fight. We don't have those. Deborah sounds unmarriable. Well...
Hmm. She's sassy. Now here is... It's a weird game. Um, it's whack-a-mole. With, like, benefits, I guess? I guess you'd use the stylus. I mean, I have a mouse. You don't get anything for this at all, except for... The joy of, uh... Playing whack-a-mole? You have to hit it in the order it says up top. I don't care to do this. Nor does the game care to allow me to. <laughs> Thanks for the orange slime. Oh boy, the high score. I did it. They couldn't even be arsed to put in other scores to give you incentive to beat it. Someone programmed it and someone else reluctantly put it in. And there it is. Where'd my whole party go? <laughs> Guys. Let's just collect the rest of my team. Alright. Now we can check out the actual shops. Now here is, I do want to buy a cautery sword at some point for Gudeon. It's, it's boosted power and it casts his in battle, so it's pretty good. It will give him a way to attack all enemies. We have the, we have our dad's sword, we don't need it. Do you sell anything special here? Man who never takes a holiday? Nope. Not a dang thing. But first, let's go ahead and return to Lodestar. We have some garbage to buy and some garbage to get rid of. This guy wanted a thousand bucks for whatever this is. A ship in a bottle. Let's take a look at that ship in a bottle. How did it get in there? You could buy more than one if you were crazy. I don't, I don't know why you want more than one. So there's the garbage we're going to buy and the garbage we need to get rid of for these tickets that they, we keep finding. Clogging up our in, unlimited bag. The things we cannot get rid of. There might be other colors for, uh, for prizes. We may never know. Alright, that's one down. Oh hey! A blue one! What could blue mean? I've never gotten anything else. A rock bomb shard. Alright, free damage against enemies. All right, we got rid of them all. And then back to... Mazo Ferrato. Mastro Ferrato. Hmm, there is this tower here. Now what the rock bomb shop rock bomb shard does 
it's essentially the boom spell. It'll do like 50, maybe 60 damage to all enemies. I'm gonna hold on to that for later. Lagardia. You guard with it. Grandmaster Nimzo. Yeah, we didn't see him in the last game. So we did eat up some MP, so let's go ahead and rest up at the inn. Yeah, for 20 bucks we'll stay here, restore the 16 MP we ate up. We're out of cash, so we may as well head on to the volcano. And look in the bottom right of the local map there, we'll see our destination. How we do there at these levels, eh, we'll find out. Whoa! Fantasize! We have a new enemy, we have big ol' elephants! As you'd imagine, elephants hit hard. And they have that ability, they can just... <laughs> they slammed into pajamas and knocked them back into the wagon. You can't bring them back out during the fight, and... You have to take your time to pull them back out after. see where down and around it's a neat enemy sadly you'd never get a chance to recruit any elephant type enemy and a new enemy jiggery pokers tougher cousins of their buddies but we're tougher now as well so not too worried about using up MP at this point Volcano may require more than one pass. If we manage to u save up 3k, we'll buy an Iron Mask. Hey, we have a new enemy, Chimera. Like you saw in the very first Dragon Warrior. They've been around for a while in their same form, now animated. They are recruitable. If you're at least level 15, then you have a 1 in 16 chance of getting a Chimera. They max out at level 60. Oh no! <laughs> I'm in the wagon. Good job, guys. I got slammed by an elephant. You'd imagine that to be practically an instant kill, huh? So it just kind of blows you back. Alright, now, the game understands this area is very hard. It even lets you bring your entire wagon in here. Which is very kind of it. Now, we don't have anything in the wagon. But it's there. Toss that bulb in the bag. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's Crispin. Down the first path is... nothing. And here we have Monster Tamers. The new enemy, they can bring more monsters. Including the bag of last we've seen before. That's pretty much the main thing, they just constantly bring more monsters, including Cure Slimes, which is 
what you would want them to bring, because Cure Slimes are a recruitable enemy. If you're at least level 16, which we are, you have a 1 in 64 chance of getting a Cure Slime. My god, they made those difficult to recruit. They max out at level 50, but if you can get lucky enough to get one of those, absolutely keep them around in the wagon as your healing battery. Heck, you could let them fight. They're good. Alright, here with Hot Bog and... How do you say that? Gamogen? They tough. Not that we can't handle, but they tough. Here we find some more cash. Let's keep an eye on that. We're gonna bail as soon as we have enough money for the Iron Mask. Yeah, we can upgrade either our hood or our wooden hat. And here we have a new enemy, Goody Bag. Goody Bag can cast Fizzle, it can silence you, not worry about that. It can also drain magic, which is the worst problem. This team's not a physical attacking, or magically attacking team. Goody Bag's also recruitable. If you're at least level 16, you have a 1 in 16 chance of getting a Goody Bag. They max out at level 7. 7? Yeah, that's, a, that's not a typo I put down there. Last level 7. What was I looking at? Cash. 1800. They drop a lot of cash. They're worth fighting. I want to make sure I keep enough MP to cast evac. And we have a new enemy, Rock Bomb. Rock Bombs, if you're at least level 15, you have a 1 in 64 chance of getting a Rock Bomb on your team. They max out at level 20. I... They usually start off fights asleep, but I've never gotten one to join my team. They tend to go boom. Pretty early in the fight. Be nice if it happened, I'd like to see what they can do, but... None of my play tests have ever... None of my test runs have ever gotten one. Yeah, they have enough defense that Gutru with the basic boomerang is not doing a whole lot of work anymore. Hey, hey, level 17. Good to see it. When the boomerang falls much further behind, we'll be switching over to the poison needle. And someday I might remember to try out the terror... Terror Crow. And we find a TNT ticket. Awesome. That'll come in handy. Alright, now. Show off the crow. Oh no, he brought an elephant. He's unsurprised. Elephant, how do you feel about crows? About scarecrows. Unsurprised. Well, I guess it could do things, but meh. Alright, Pajamas has finally learned to move. Focus Strength. Lost that TNT ticket in the bag. The Terror Crow. I guess the Pajamas. Focus Strength, you use it, and the next turn you do more damage. Unless you know the enemy is going to guard, it's really not worth it for you. However, the AI likes to use it. And here we have a new enemy, Hunter Mech. Because there are always giant fighting robots. Doesn't really fit with the aesthetic so far, but yeah, giant robots. Let's go. Don't worry, you can... There's a chance you could recruit one of their cousins later. Don't count on it. That's the wrong way. 
always take the wrong path here because you have to go down into the lava. And here we have, oh boy, the toughest enemy in this section. Flamethrowers. They are very powerful. They are the reason that you want to be way le higher level than we are here. We might be okay, we have magic shields. And I'm going to use swoosh to hit them all. Uh, actually... Might be better off just throwing the boomerang. Yeah, let's do swoosh. Now, if you're level 16, you have a chance, 1 in 64 chance of recruiting a flamethrower. They max out at level 40. Yeah, look at that damage with our fire protection. If all four of them decide to do that, they can just delete party members. It's worth doing the extra damage with Swoosh. I've never managed to recruit one of these because they are far too powerful to try to farm them. Oof. All right. They are far too powerful to try to to try to recruit them, and I've never I've never thought of coming back here later. Let me find the staff of anti magic. It does what you think it would do. It casts fizzle on an enemy, and we'll give that to Gutrude. I've never thought of coming back here later to pick one up when we can laugh them off. Just to see what they do. I'd imagine they're really good. Now, the AI in this game, way better than the earlier one. Where, if they're vulnerable to things like this, like stop spell, the AI will use it. And with Gucci being so fast, it's pretty good. Alright, we're still doing okay. We have enough MP to keep moving forward. That's why I said I wasn't worried about using MP, because... We'll be taking two trips through the volcano. Thanks, Cure Slime. As soon as I'm low on MP, we're dipping out. Eight for that. Alright, so we got like one battle left in us. There was one box I wanted to get to first. Oh crap. Alright, get the flamethrower. Nuts. Uh, He hits so hard. Come on, get it, get it. All right, we got the iron ma uh, iron helmet. Sorry, iron helmet. It's a free upgrade. Which is why I didn't bother getting it for um, any earlier. It's only a few points of, de of defense, so it's not worth buying, I don't think. But it's a big upgrade for. Hmm, what is the, what is the font doing on Terra Crow up above? It just looks, it looks different, stretched out or something from the others. Interesting. Right, I want to give that to Pajamas. Pajama needs all the help he can get, since he doesn't wear a shield. It's a, it's a dog. Oh, it's a kitty. And... Doesn't have elemental protection, so... You get all the help you get. Alright, let's get out of here. Didn't, don't have enough for zoom, so we're going to have to walk back to Master Ferrado, but... We'll rest up at the inn, and then we'll dive back in.
Julian! Oh, you can bring him back out. Okay. I misremembered. Well, in that case, if the wagon's with you, then that's just a wasted turn on their part. Woo, that's close. You know what? This is the opportunity to use a Chimera Wing. See where it brings us. Alright, right here. That's not bad. We can handle the volcano just fine. We all come out crawling. Come crawling back, dragging our li near lifeless bodies. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's an awesome morning. There's enough treasure off the beaten path that I can say it's worth it to go there underleveled, gaining some experience along the way. We want the Iron Mask, we also want the Top Hat. The Shellmate was practically free. Not nearly enough to get up to Iron Mask levels, but... Now our slime buddy, he's... Over a hundred. More defense than we do. Because we're still waiting on that Iron Mask. Jiggery Pokers. Whole bunch of them. Right, I wanted to get a lot more medical herbs. I wanted to get like three stacks of them. Good job, Gudian. On this path, I want to pass. I want to make sure I don't have to use my own MP to heal. In case we need to bail. Not worried about anyone else using up their MP. Just mine. Quick, item shop man who never takes a vacation. And sure, since we doubled back, we'll give this guy more patronage for being such a friendly, happy guy. I tell you, if there was a place with this kind of customer service, I'd, I would solicit it. Just a couple of ghouls. But even though we got Pankraza's sword, the Edge Boomerang I feel is still better for random encounters. However, if I needed the chance for a crit against the metal enemies, I would switch over. Seed of Wisdom. 
no one needs it. So we'll toss that in the bag for later monsters. That we may or may not get. We'll see. Tear his head off, pajamas! Yeah! A lot of chances at these 1 in 64, but... I would never chase after a 1 in 64 monster. If it happens, great, but... But if you're one of those people that gotta collect them all, or just really love level grinding to make the games a breeze, yeah, go for it. Knock yourself out. Like, I was... But in order to get that small fry, I was higher level than I am now, while still having Harry standing outside of... Standing outside of Coburg. Alright, and now Gutrude knows Evac. So if at any point he has 8 MP left over, we could have him use it. I'm probably going to switch him over to don't use MP at some point. Gutrude's so fast, he's going to be holding, or she, going to be holding all the items to be using in battle. Rather than having her eat them all up. Using Kasap on random encounters. When I gave you a boomerang, throw it. Guess it's in her mouth? Yes, Cure Slime. Give me that chance. Oh well. Go back and buy the medical herbs to res conserve my MP, and then I start spending it immediately. Yeah, I know. It's the cool thing to do. I would imagine the Mudraker enemy, Clayton, that we got... I would imagine they have some pretty serious fire resistance built into them. Like, they were made for the vault tearing apart the volcano. Which is nice of them that they always give you an easy enemy to get. That'll make the next section a lot easier. If you didn't get a healing monster, this area could be a lot tougher. But we have Gudian. Now, while earlier for our hero Danda, he got a spell whoosh that was garbage and terrible and never has a place to be used, swoosh is not that same thing. Swoosh is powerful. We saw swoosh in action. It can do work. Embrace the fire. The floor is hot. Oh boy. Just the one? Okay, good. Seed of Resilience, alright. Go ahead and chomp on that right away. Three, nice. Good hit. Oh boy. Ow. 
Gertrude. Yeah, <laughs> eat them, pajamas. All right, learn to spell absorb magic. Absorb magic works in an interesting way. When you cast absorb magic on any member of your party, and whenever a spell hits them, that person will then absorb the MP that was get that was used to attack them. So they don't absorb the spell, but they do absorb get the MP back. So particularly useful to throw on strategically during boss fights to keep your MP up. So if a boss is throwing a lot of spells, Gudian can then help help keep the team going even harder. As he's restoring his MP from taking hits. 1500 gold? Awesome. Oh boy. This could hurt. This hurts. No. Okay. That was not the big hit. Ooh, boy. Got pretty lucky there. At any point, a group of flamethrowers like that can decide to just erase your party. And okay, we have enough protection that that's... The little one's no threat. We take more damage walking on the... the spicy floor. Now you want to take the lower path first? Yes. Because the game is polite enough to realize this area was real hard, they threw in a full heal. Which is why I wasn't worried about people using their MP. So at this point, I'm going to ask, very politely, that nobody uses their magic. Do we tempt it at these low levels? Now, if you have a monster that can cast snooze, cast snooze over and over until it works. I don't have such a monster. But this is the battle I was thinking of when I bought the packs a punch. Where's the pillow? Who's holding the pillow? I seem to have lost track of the pillow. Oh, you have the pillow. Okay. Alright, here we find the Circle of Fire. And surrounding the Circle of Fire... Is a circle of fire for boss time against Magmen. They are insanely powerful. First thing I want to use is. Do I use the Rocks Bomb Shard here? Could. No, I want to use the Packs of Punch on myself and then start throwing that boomerang for big hits. And hope Goodian can keep up with that healing. Boosh might still be better, actually. Hmm. Or... Is it time to focus one at a time?
Yeah, for 100 damage, we'll chop them one piece at a time. Ow. If they all did that, that was it. When they're hitting for just under half my health. Alright, it's worn off. Switch back over. Give him a swoosh. Alright, we got him. Woo! I have seen guides that recommend getting up to like level 22, 23 for this guy. This team, and I don't blame them. That is easily the hardest fight in the game. Well, up there, tied for it. Now, the Circle of Fire is an accessory. It can be used in battle. It has no stats, so you could wear it. I'm gonna wear- I'm gonna put it on anyway. We worked hard for this. I'm wearing it. So I bought that Paxa Punch on the TNT board, because we got lucky enough to land on the item shop. It was well worth the 600 gold for it. Well, what am I doing? Let's get out of here. Those flamethrowers make that place a very dangerous spot. They have some resistance to snooze. Which is why I was looking for the pillow. If the AI knows it's gonna work, they might have tossed it in. And put one to sleep. Instead, he just bit, this, bit his head off, which is fine. If you can cast Snooze, go for it. You have a chance of getting all three asleep on every turn. You try it. I wouldn't recommend grinding in the volcano. It's very dangerous in there. Unless you can get to the healing point. Once you reach the healing point, you can level up as far as you want. Keep beating all those flamethrowers if you gotta. Maybe you could get one on your team. I'd imagine their fire attacks wouldn't do anything to you then. Yeah, that was with the protection of the magic shields. That fire damage. I'd imagine that can do easily upwards of 60 damage to you. Per person. Thanks, guy. What an awesome morning. Alright, let's go tell him that we got the Circle of Fire. We are front runner right now, right? To get that lady. She's got blue hair, which is interesting. Alright, we get a little boat. He took the thing away, it's fine. I'm not into the blue hair, that's not my thing. It's yours, yeah, go for it. Alright, we get a ship now. Now we can't go past the shoals or the or the bridges or this gate. Maybe it's this. But it's locked. So we get a boat, we can go exactly one place with it. Stock and barrel. Yeah, let's check out stock and barrel. Hmm. 
Anything in the well? Oh, hey, a man is. Hmm. I'm not gonna tell anybody you want you like roses? Fine with me. What do they sell here? They sell They sell the cautery sword, so we could pick up one of those. We have money, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we go for a bath with the old people? Due to strength? Great, let's take, go ahead and take that, but right here, it's a boss time, pretty much. Earn expected. They are actually quite powerful. Enough that I'm going to put the sword on. They can cast whack. They have pretty good physical attacks. They have an incredibly powerful desperation attack that your defense does not help with. And very high evasion. So yeah, watch out for that. Hey, how's it going? And they sell leather hats here for, I guess, in case you got a new monster and you want to put anything on his head. Uh, yeah, we just beat a really tough boss. Let's go ahead and drop the save. Doesn't hurt. But if you search the grave next to this praying girl, you find mini metal number 14. Well, if they're going to open it for anybody, then what's the point? Now, it's only 12 points better for a Gudeon, but we have the cash. And having it to having an uh, Goody and the ability to use an AOE attack that isn't his boom spell, pretty good. If you have someone that can use a poison moth knife, it's not bad. Because it can paralyze. It's not very strong though. I'm gonna temporarily hold on to the broadsword. He's not open there during the day, but mini metal number 15 is. Kind of sketchy if you ask me, but. I like hot tubs. Uh, yeah. Medical herb, awesome, can't have too many of those. Hmm, feeling hungry. Don't look at Gutrude. Oh, Whitey's Bianca. Hmm, 
we did hear that her family left Brownbeck. Wonder where Bianca could be. Now, if you walk under this one, on the under the really big bridge. We could poke her head down the well. And find another TNT ticket. Awesome. We'll put those to use soon enough, actually. Not this episode, but soon enough. Hey, it's Whitey! Sick as always. Well... About that... Oh, that was Bianca. Yeah, it's the only blonde person we know. And we have pajamas. Huh, I guess you wouldn't get that line of dialogue if you don't have pajamas with you. I haven't the last two test runs. I got lucky enough, I fought for that small fry and... Another time I tried out a prestigitator. true has been hanging around with me, except for that one run I got that metal slime. Hmm, nothing in here. It's not your real daughter? Oh man. She doesn't... Does she know? Hmm. Can't take care of her. We're about to get married to a blue-haired girl. Well, thanks. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate the help. Maybe you can open that gate so we can get up north. Yeah, I'm ready. And more party member. And Bianca is an actual party member. In fact, she's gonna boot Gertrude out, because rude like that. I'm a drifter. We're no longer an escape convict. We're just drifting around the land. She's a girl from the inn. She has some clothes. She has some abilities. She's a wizard. She comes with the mighty oomph spell, which is Pax-a-Punch. She has Sue. She has Sizzle. Cassat. She's pretty good, all in all. But she's not a monster, so... First the place she's going is... Back in the wagon. Sorry, childhood friend, but... Alright, now there are enemies on the ocean. Thank you. New enemies, Polywiggles! Having Bianca would give us more party talk to get through, but... We're not in need of a wizard right now. We have our team, it's looking pretty good. Now when I first played, I assumed that this is where you'd find the Circle of Water. On an island, surrounded by water, on this big bay that we can't get out of. It took me a while to remember that we had made note 
of a waterfall cave up here. Just to remind us, there's the local map for this area. There is an enemy I want to encounter. Not these guys, but they are new suckling ockers. Tiny octopi. Sure, they're delicious. They're annoying, they can drain your MP. Good job, Gutrude. Now, I can't drop Bianca off at Monty's either. Much as I'd like to. Every time I walk into town, she's gonna boot someone out so she can step into the party. Game, encounter rate. A new enemy, Mermen. I'm not looking for a rare encounter. They're all over the place. Actually, I wonder. Can you hold a sword in your mouth? No. <laughs> oh, I poked the waterfall. You want to go with us? Uh, no. There'll be more time on the ocean later. Now, she'll fuss to be in the party. She's not necessary in the party. You can talk to her. You can start to use your new fire wizard in this cave where everything is vulnerable to fire. How are you going to say no to my slime, my slime knight, pajamas, Gutrude? Poking us and running away. Jerks. And here's a new enemy, Gestank. Yeah. He nasty looking. They can do that. Nuts. Fortunately, we have Squelch. We have a couple people with Squelch, and they'll use it. Now, if you use Heal All, they'll throw Squelch on top of it. It's pretty helpful, actually. Now, if someone's dead, they won't you throw Zing at it. You take what you can get. Ugh, Orcus thanks. So far, the only thing we've encountered in here that is recruitable is the Cure Slime, but that's, again, 1 in 64, so unlikely. They don't notice us. Okay, goodbye. All right, jump them. Nasty. At least it dropped an antidote herb. Why not? Let's just toss that. That is for if we're out of MP and it happens. So it ca it costs two. We can spare a couple of MP for your poison. A pretty cave. I like it. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I mean, that, we were told to come here for just for that purpose.
All right, and by taking the bottom path, you can see that there's two paths up above that also go nowhere. Hey, a seed of resilience. Nice. Drop rates? They're typically not high in the Dragon Quest games. It's like 1 in 16 or all of the drop rates for the most part. So that was pretty fortunate that we keep getting those. Yes. We've reached the point where they're dipping out on us. We take the very top path. Yeah, pajamas, I'm feeling you too. Over here is a hole and some stairs. So it's always a safer bet, take the stairs first. The hole might be one way. Even if you know what direction to go in. It's nice that we're getting all these chances at the Cure Slime. Luck is not with us to roll a 1, one in 64. Alright, it looks like the hole actually led somewhere we couldn't reach through here. We'll have to remember to go back to the hole. Another antidote herb found. We might reach a point where we run out of MP and have to use them. And some mer more mermen. They're pretty basic enemies. They are certainly not the concern against Poison Boy there. Mr. Bad Breath. I guess it wouldn't be his breath, you're more like body odor then, huh? Walk behind the waterfall where it's nice and purdy. of 100 gold. And up here we find Circle of Water. Circle of Water is not... It's not guarded by a boss. Used during battle. I forgot to use the Ring of Fire. Oh well. I will remember to use this. Inventory's full. We had to head up to that hole. We have so much to explore. What if we went right? Here we find an elfin elixir. That's the second one we found. Full MP restore. Very useful. And necessary. Especially seeing as I'm... If you haven't noticed, I'm not going to be using human characters. If ever uh, I'm given the option to.
Dan did not include it. Hey, hey, orcs. We haven't seen these guys yet. Now, we can't recruit orcs. That's their cousins. But they're pretty cool looking. A lot of flourish in their combat animation. Someone took extra care to make it look especially charming. Nice stun, Goochard. Just to show off that went nowhere. There's still a, still a, a uh, ocean enemy we haven't encountered in here either. Level 19. Alright, time to fall down the hole! There is second hole, but there is also path. Path will bring us to the Rope of Serenity. Now, same as Dragon Warrior 4, when you're asleep or you are paralyzed, this thing will boost your defense by quite a bit. It's not... that is weird. I don't see it being useful. But if you have someone who can wear it, go for it. It's not... it has pretty decent stats, so if you have a Prestigitator, He'd appreciate it. If you had Bianca, she could wear it. So that's everything in here. Let's go. Even nice enough to put us back on the boat. Can't party talk with people in the back. Or in the wagon. Even though, would they still... They're on the ship, would they really be considered still sitting in the wagon? That'd be funny. You're banished to the wagon, you don't get to hang out on board with us. I guess we don't find those enemies just yet. see the inspiration for some Pokemon in these Dragon Quest enemies. Yeah, you see, she forces her way into the party, booting out Gutrude. Oh man, we really got that cash going. We can sell the Robo Serenity for 3,000, so yeah, we're, we're sitting pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. We're sitting alright. Uh... Mr. Briscoletti, we did it. I got the water. All right, let's get married to blue-haired Nira.
Nira or Bianca? Hmm. I understand. I understand that I wasted 20 bucks staying at the end just now. So now we have to decide who we're going to marry. You're gonna marry our childhood friend, Bianca? <laughs> Pick both of them. We're gonna marry super nice and monastic Nira? Or do we go rogue and ask Deborah for her hand in marriage? <laughs> Rather me than you. Now the decision, the choices come down to who, who you want to marry. If you're planning on using the wife in your party once you marry her, well, Nira is, she gets some healing spells. You got the uh, Deborah's kind of a fighter. Bianca we saw is a black mage. And someday, you know, when we decide to settle down and get married, well, right, you have to talk to Bianca. You have to poke around Briscoletti. Someday we have kids, the color of our wife is going to decide what color hair our children have. And that's what I'm solely going to base this on. Because I'm not going to use the wife in combat anyway. While it'd be kind of neat for Nira to have a healing battery, because every time you walk into a town, people get booted out. Well, that's nice of Rodrigo. Even if we don't marry his daughter, he'll still put the bill for us to get married. Uh, Personality-wise, Nira keeps saying how she is kind of annoying and wanting to be the best wife she could be. Um, Bianca is, like, idealistic, I guess, wife. And Deborah's really mean to you and treats you like a slave, so... But I guess if you're actually using them, that would matter? Now keep in mind the Super Nintendo version, there was no Debra, so you had two choices there. Uh, I've given careful consideration. No, just kind of kind of wing it. Scatamoosh, scatamoosh. So who are we going to marry? Hmm. 